Hi guys, welcome to Eclipse Shortcuts tutorial. So uh, this is not for the automation testers or developers. This is useful for everyone who is willing to work with Eclipse. So when we choose the Eclipse ID, the basic shortcuts that are available in the Eclipse were discussed over here and it was uh, made to work practically on Eclipse ID. We'll just work with Eclipse ID and we'll show what are the shortcuts we have picked up from the Eclipse. So let's see what are the shortcuts and how we segregated them. So basically we have segregated the shortcuts into formatting, auto searching, debugging, searching, refactoring and switching. So this is how we formatted uh, or segregated the topics into the shortcuts into. And uh, the first shortcut uh, which is available for us is Control Shift L which is used for viewing all the Eclipse shortcuts that are available. So just let's navigate with Eclipse and use Control Shift L. So you can see these are the all the default shortcuts that are available with Eclipse. While working with Eclipse, you can utilize all these things. So we have picked up some of the most important of these things, which will be useful in day-to-day -day activities while working with Eclipse. So let's see the next command. Control comma or control dot. So this is useful navigating to the errors or warnings. So we can see we are having some errors over here. So it was listed here. So assume we are somewhere down somewhere and some error is there, so we'll not be able to compile. So how to navigate to that error? Just control dot or control comma it navigates to the error. So you are having multiple errors. Then we can just use the control dot or control comma consecutively so that we will be navigating to the errors one after the other. Okay, next. The next shortcut that is available is used for formatting. Formatting shortcuts. So these shortcuts, the first one is control set F. This is used for auto formatting. So see, uh, as you like we have written the code and it was in not in a formatted manner. So we can do Control A, select all and then Control Shift A. So that it gets formatted in a particular manner. So it looks uh, very easy and very good to understand with the check. And our next shortcut is Control forward slash and control shift backward slash these are used for commenting commenting purpose so select a particular line of text yes I'll give a new line and then select that line and do control forward slash so that line is commented Use the same command again. Control forward slash it is uncommented. So single line comments. And next, control shift forward slash. This is used for adding block comments around the selection. So same thing which we have selected. Control uh, select this particular line of code and then use control shift forward slash. So it is going to multi-line comment concept. And then we wanted to remove the multi-line comment. Then we need to choose backward slash. So for single line comment, if we use control forward slash consecutively, it is commented and it is uncommented. But for multi-line comments, you can see copy the line of code again. This is multi lines control shift. So if we use control shift for our slash consecutively, we will not get any comment yet. So we need to use control shift backward slash. So it is uncommented. Next shortcut Alt shift J add element command. So assume some documentation like this is there. 
so we need to add the comment for this so let's see how to add comment for this control alt shift j is a shortcut Available at the method level. So that's the reason it comes over here. So next shortcut change the selection to lowercase and uppercase. If you want to change it into lowercase and uppercase, you can use it is rarely used. So we are avoiding this one. And then auto search. So as we have already seen uh, for auto search, like session, we need to give a try catch block for this one. So one way to do it is type dr and do control space. So it gives auto searched all the things. So since we are going with try catch, we click on try catch and then it was created. Give the lines over here or those and the way to do a try catch space. So these things and control. Alt zip check. Alt zip check is used to comment. So it is used to add the try catch block for the respect to lines that are selected. So for the respect to line selected, the try catch block is automatically added. This is one way to add the try catch block. So auto search. So we know only first uh, two lines, if, uh, first two or three things we remember, and then we wanted to understand if we want to get all the available uh, sessions, we can use control space and we'll be getting the sessions. The same way you can use alt and power slash and the same repeats. But we need to give first two letters before getting an auto search. Assume lock not info we want it so alt and power slash it gives the particular command so auto search then we are saying control space and then control one control one is for auto fix we are already saying excuse me for example uh, we would like to now get to the error first so control dot and then we want to see all the sessions that are available for avoiding this error. So click on control one, it gives the available sessions. So you can choose one among them to avoid the error. So this is typically the shortcut used for. Next, alt forward slash as we already saw, uh, seen, it is used to propose the word completion. And next, control shift O. If there is any unorganized imports, assume that we are using testng in a particular test file, but we haven't imported um, the testng into it. So what happens? It will show an error. So we want to uh, overcome that one. We can use Control C2. It will automatically import. It will automatically organize all the imports uh, to avoid those errors. Next, control two. Control two is used for assigning statements to the array box. So let's see over here. So let's duplicate this line of the before giving the semicolon, if you wanted to see what is a variable, uh, what is the object or the variable type, data type, that this get text command will result into. If get text is getting some value, that will be stored in which type of, which data type or which object type. So 
before that use control to so we are asking a quick assist assign to the field or assign to the local variable etc so we will do control so assign to the local variable we give this net and it assigns to a local variable so it means that the get text method is going to return a text value so we wanted to store that value into a variable called text so this is the essence of that one next the same way it's for field and as we already seen uh, to select a block of uh, code and then we want to put it into high catch block we use we select the particular block of code and use alt zip check so that particular block of code is put into try catch block and next one is control shift L it is used for the solid taken next this commands this shortcuts are used for searching so control O for example this is a class file and in this class file I wanted to just go through uh, in a quick I want to have a quick view of all the commands that are available and that are inherited. So if I give the shortcut control O we'll be seeing all the list of methods that are available over here in this particular class implementation. If you give control O once more, if there are any inherited methods that are available that will also be displayed you can see. From which class they belong to, or they belong to some inherited class. So, basically, so this was inherited class. So, this is our local class, and this is our inherited class. This is child, and this is parent. So, this method is inherited from this class, which parents. So, if you control them again, these all belongs to search Google, search, say Google search related class methods and if you wanted to see the parent class related uh, methods also implemented methods also or so we give control over once again and then it lists of all those things the type of the class uh, that they are related from so this is a very typically used shortcut next the next one is F2 so uh, if you want to get some information regarding the particular method which we are using or the particular class which we are using. So we have will be having that uh, class libraries that are added like test and selenium etc. And then if you want to do how the selection of a particular method that is being used for, then we can choose the particular class and then we can do F2 over there. It opens up like this and it shows all the information. So going through the information, you can get some idea on what is the purpose of this particular method. So this is the uses of this particular command F2, shortcut F2. So F5, next F3. If you select a particular class name and then click on F3, sorry, if you select a particular method and select F3 it shows if it is implementation is in a different class and we are utilizing we are calling this particular method in a different class so it will show where actually the implementation has been done so it will allow it to the particular class where the actual implementation of this method has been done so that is the uses of F3 F4 is used for open the type hierarchy for example from here you can see think the Google search class is extending the base database. So if you add four over here, it shows the hierarchy. You can see the parent class for Google search is base base. The base base parent is object class. And also it lists out all the methods that are available in this particular class and if you wanted to see all the 
implemented in Azure members also. You can get this one, and it shows all the entity members. And if you wanted to hide the fields, you can use this, and it hides the fields, and it only shows the implementing methods, inherited methods. So this is the type hierarchy, and this is package. We are basically package project package package explorer here. And next shortcut is Control D. Control D is used for finding out the appearance of the expression in the current. It is also used for opening the type hierarchy only. So let's see. Control D. It opens up here itself instead of opening up in the separate explorer. So and then Control Shift U. It is used to identify the number of paths and expression has been repeated. So you can see it has repeated in line number 27 and it has repeated in line number 42. So to navigate to line number 42, control L is the command and then to line number 42. So you can see same line. Same variable is utilized twice. So it occurs here and there, line number 26 and line number 42. This is basically used for this purpose. Difference between control D and control shift D. Control D is used for basically identifying the particular uh, thing in the particular open the type hierarchy in that particular class. But control shift is used for opening the type hierarchy even if it's in the jar file somewhere. Control shift G is like a global search. It is used to search in the complete workspace. So it will be searching the entire workspace and then it will be listing out wherever it was available. So nowhere else when this uh, particular class file it was available so it was not displayed. Next, Control Alt H, it displays the color hierarchy. This is called this method has been called from a different method and it shows the color hierarchy from where it was being called. Where was the calling method and where was the call method? Control Alt H. So you can see over here. Where was the call and where was the calling method? It clearly displays over here. So it was a part of the linear web element. This is an interface inside that interface, which was implemented by even firing web driver web element. So this has implemented this method, and that method we are calling from this particular class. So this is a hierarchy. This is the hierarchy of implementation of the particular method. So next, let's see the next shortcut is shift F2. Very useful Java documentation for the selector type. We use for showing the documentation. And next, uh, uh, control shift P. So assume uh, when you are working with a very big logic or constructs, if else, if else, if else, if else, nested if else, etc. Then there is always a possible chance for us to uh, 
So fall into a problem of identifying the way for which open braces, which close brace is the matching close brace. So in that point of time, it's very easy to identify. You can just run it to the particular opening brace, that closing brace, and then you can use Control Shift to it will clearly show you what the closing brace or matching brace for the open brace. Then another shortcut we can use it is Alt Shift of arrow key. So it selects a particular line of code up to the matching brace. So this entire code is related to this particular matching braces. So this is the purpose of these two uh, shortcuts. The shortcuts are Alt Shift of arrow key, it selects the entire line of codes. If you go to this matching brace and then give Control Shift key, it just now gets to the other matching brace which needs to be completed. So these are the shortcuts and next one is Control L as we already discussed for navigating to the line number and Control Q. This is a very useful command. So I have been editing somewhere over here. So I wanted to go back to that particular line back again. So I, I came here. I was editing over here. It's your I was creating one more copy of this. And then I went to here. Now I wanted to go back to the previous page. So press Ctrl Q. It will be automatically navigated to the previous edit. So it is a very useful command. And then Control K and Control Shift K it is used for navigating through the search. As you like you wanted to search same keys. Okay. So uh, select particular text. So lock it is in which you want to search. So we want to search through the entire class file where this lock was present. So you select the line word and then press control K. So these are the lines. These are all the implementations of uh, these are all the places where lock is there. If you want it to navigate upwards, then control shift K will navigate upwards. Next one, next shortcut is control H. Control H and Control Alt H. The basic difference is Control Alt H is used for showing the type hierarchy, opening the call hierarchy. The Control H is used for searching the workspace for task search. Any files, anything, not only Java files, but any other files too. So assume I want to search the pom.xml file. So there is no form or external file in this particular workspace. So any file containing text you wanted to search is your mm, You can see in this particular files that compile text is there. So in all these files, the line of text is available. So you can see even on the XML file, the line of text is available. So it is not for searching that particular text, but it is used for uh, searching the line of text available in any file. It is not only in Java file. Earlier we have seen that uh, Control Alt G, Control Shift G, it is used for universal universal search for any line of any line we are searching, but it is used for searching within the Java files alone. The control H is used for searching not only in the Java files, but also in all the text files and all the configuration files, etc., within the workspace. That's the basic difference between these two things, these two shortcuts. The next one is control C. Control C is also used for incremental search, like control K. It is also used for the same purpose, but it is used for as it is already written, we can see incremental search forward. It's similar to almost 
कंट्रोल के So our next command is RT. RT is used to open the return file menu. RT. So the name, or chain method signature. These are the refactoring commands that are available. Refactoring shortcuts that are available. So basically, mostly we will be using RT shift R and RT shift C. Use for method signature or change and the method name changes or the variable name changes so you can like why these are useful so we are having we're utilizing the variable or the method in different places we're using get text method at different different places within our work uh, workspace within different java files so we are implemented or we are implemented from parent file to child file Child, uh, child class file. Okay, child Java file. So what happens is like if you wanted to change manual in the sense we need to change it uh, in the parent file and then there is always a possible chance for missing out somewhere or the other. So in order to avoid all these things, if you wanted to change the name at one place, it needs to be reflected to the other place too. So for that, refactoring is used. So let me refactor this one. Alt shift R. You can see this enter to refactor. So change it into search field and press enter. And continue. So wherever it was there, it will get refactored. So from here and any other place it was there. So basically in some way, we can see one more example. So um, this right predefined methods. That's the reason there was some problem. So let's see. Search. So I think so basically let's see what's the problem. Control K the two places it should be reflected Changing, but it was changing back. This is some problem. Okay, let's see in another point. There is some problem. Uh, assume I was using this first name in some other place too so I wanted to print it somewhere or something so 
will use control space bar with plus auto session and then print the first name. So file. And then alt enter, alt forward slash and use automatic session auto complete. So now I want it to in fact it is first name here go. Okay, and now I just want it to change this end to capital N. Okay. Enter. So you can see it was modified. So if we change at one place, the all the changes will be reflected to all other places wherever it was being used. This is the very use this is the purpose of using refactoring. The next one, the next shortcut is Alt Shift C. This is used for changing the method signature. If you are changing the method signature, you want to change the method signature similar to the same way how we use for variables, they can use it for changing the method signature too. Using Alt Shift C instead of Alt Shift R. And next things are used for debugging purpose. When you are debugging, uh, to start the debugging, we use F11 and uh, to step into the definition or the function, uh, we use F5. F5 is used to navigate one of the other step by step. F6 is line by line navigation. And F7, F7 is from navigation from method to method. So it will execute the complete method and then next it will wait over there and execute the next line and then if there is a next method available then it completes the execution of the method and it comes back to the next line. F8 is used for skipping to the next breakpoint. And so far navigating from step by step line by line it navigates completely from breakpoint to breakpoint. So it executes, assume that there are two breakpoints within the course, it executes from the first breakpoint and it waits at the next breakpoint. Once it will carefully take it, it executes the next line of course. And then control alt b is used for reloading. It is used for uh, toggling the breakpoints. So skipping all the breakpoints. Control shift b is used for toggling the breakpoints. So we can see this thing. Assume that we have kept two breakpoints over here. Here one and here one. So if you want to skip all the breakpoints, as we have seen the command, the shortcut is Control Alt B. So you see, it was right out. So it has. So it was unable to. So if you want it to toggle the breakpoints, the same thing. Control Shift B. It's Control Alt B. Control Shift B. So we can use control alt b which works fine. So next next command is used for switching. So what we are going to switch, we are going to switch between um, the views. Assume like the views are like uh, views are like the backend explorer view extra. So if you wanted to navigate through the views then we will be using the commands control F7. We want it to navigate through the perspectives, the debug service, the Java perspective, Git perspective. So if you want to navigate between those things, then we will be using control F6. So let's see one more. Control F7. So when you go to control F7, it shows all the views available. So we can select the view we want to navigate to. So if you wanted to navigate through different perspectives, control F6. Sorry, control F8. So if you wanted to navigate between the open files, so that is control F6. Toggling between the open files.
so these are the mostly uh, the shortcuts that are available and we have covered almost every shortcut so one more shortcut I want you to discuss over here we are having mentioned control A, control C yes. so you can see all the method implementations have been come uh, it's not an expanded state you can see clearly what all the methods that are available over here one shot so this is a very good review if you want to review back you can expand it if you want to expand them back you can select them here and then control forward slash so if you click control shift forward slash it will get compressed if you want to expand, if you want to expand, have the expanded view, then use control forward slash again, and you can see your method was expanded. When compressed away, if you want to see all the methods, then use control A, control shift forward slash. So, guys, these are the various shortcuts that are very useful and very handy while working with. Java and for working with Eclipse. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching.